Alright, how's everybody doing? Back again with another video for you guys today. And today, I'm going to be doing my full review of the Alcatel One Touch Idol 3. Real quick before I get started on the review, however, I just want to talk about the headphones that were included with the device. Now, a little bit of backstory. Um, I'm not sure when this phone came out, but I did watch some press coverage. And Alcatel partnered up with a company called uh, JBL. They're um, really big in audio um, equipment and audio tech to make their speakers on the device. And they also included some JBL headphones. And I must say, these headphones are awesome. They're really good at canceling out the outside noise and the sound. Um, on them is very clear and balanced. It's not too bass heavy, but it's really well balanced and it's really clear. And listening to music and taking phone calls with these headphones were, oh, it, it was awesome. It's almost hard to find words for it, but it was awesome. And since they're um, um, flat cables, it doesn't tangle too much. And now uh, I did have a gripe, however, because it's wired cables, it did get snagged on a lot of my stuff. But to my surprise, they didn't really get yanked out that much, although they did get yanked out a few times. But overall, I have to say the included earbuds with the Idol 3 here are um, they're awesome. They're pretty good. So that's that. Put these off to the side real fast. Now, moving on to the star of the show, here's the Idol 3, so let's just jump right into this. First thing I want to talk about for you guys is the display. Now, up front dead center here, the Idol 3 has a 4.7 inch IPS LCD display, and it's, um, it's, seven, it's a 720p display, and I must say, guys... It's a beautiful display. Like, the brightness is not even cranked up all the way, but... It, yeah, see, I did better today. My lighting's a little bit better. The display is beautiful, and I think the video really captures that. No issues with the display whatsoever. Outdoors, it, did get, it does get really bright outdoors. So, no issues there. Now, as you can see, I'm going to see if my camera can readjust because I just cranked the brightness all the way. It's not readjusting too well, but it is actually really bright right now. Matter of fact, let me turn that down. I'm starting to make my eyes hurt. So, I had no issues with the brightness, you guys. So, moving on. The actual... Um, yes, hold on. So, it's a... IPS display and it's a 4.7 inch IPS display and I do believe that the pixel density is let me see if I let's check this out here all right bring that up so you guys can see it and let that focus so as you can see the pixel density is 312 and it's a 720p display and I must say guys the display is awesome so moving on now let's talk about the build quality in this guy I guess I kinda did this backwards but the overall build quality let me turn the screen off real fast the overall build quality of this guy is pretty good, pretty good. And I must say, I think I got something stuck to it by accident, there we go. I must say, it feels really light in the hand, really light. It was times where I put it in my pocket and I almost forgot it was there. I actually I forgot this phone in a few places because I'm used to more substantial phones. But the overall build quality is awesome. And if you look at the profile, it's really, really thin. Matter of fact, let me just do a quick 
comparison for you guys. Let me see what I got on hand. Uh, my Nexus 4 is the closest. Look at the profile on the Nexus 4. Now, it's it's a bit beefy because I have the case on it, but um, the case didn't add too much bulk. But look at that profile. Now, let's look at the Idle 3's profile. So, it's a really, really thin profile, and it feels really light in the hand, and it was almost surprisingly light. But overall, build quality is awesome. Awesome. Now, moving on, let's talk about the hardware and the software in this guy. So hardware-wise, we're running 1.5 gigs of RAM. We're running a quad-core processor. It's a Snapdragon 400. Clocked at 1.2 gigahertz, I believe. Let me jump back in here. And just see, swipe over, so you guys can see there. See that? Let that focus up. So yeah, 1.2 gigahertz. The Snapdragon 410. I think I said 400. It's the Snapdragon 410 with an Adreno 306 GPU. And let me check the storage real fast. Storage is, I think this is the 16 gig version. So out of the box, you have about 12 gigs. And I think out of that, I've actually used, after loading up games and benchmarks and all the apps that I use, I think I've used about 4 gigs. So, and you actually have no problems with the storage because it does support micro SD card support. You got it. There's a little SIM ejector tool that comes with it. You poke this out. You put your SIM in and your micro SD card in. And I do believe it supports cards up to 128 gigs. So that's pretty awesome. Now, so that that's the hardware. Other hardware is it has a notification LED that's just white. Has a uh, I think it's a five megapixel camera up here. And a 13 megapixel camera in the back with LED flash. And my my favorite hardware feature on this device has to be the dual front facing speakers. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Alcatel. Finally, somebody much like Motorola who puts them in the right spot. This is where the speakers are supposed to be, and the speakers sound awesome. But we're gonna get to that a little bit later. Now in terms of software, we're running Android 5.0.2, which is Lollipop. And to my surprise, my happy surprise, Alcatel did not skin this much at all. So you can see that it looks pretty much like standard Lollipop. They did, however, add a few features that I am happy to see. So if we go under gestures here, you can see, and they didn't really add much. So let me just let that focus. They added the double tap to wake and the double tap to sleep. The uh, turn over to mute and turn over to silence and activate alarms. Other than that, they added a nice little um, reversible feature. And the ability to turn off and turn on your LED. So when I say reversible... Pretty much, pretty much mean anywhere on the display, you can rotate the phone. Now the phone is upside down, and it reverses the whole UI for you. So, let me just show you another example here. I'm outside, and boom. So, you can use this phone in pretty much any orientation, and you won't have any issues. Now, another neat feature I don't think I, I mentioned, along with the dual front-facing speakers... It, these are actually both receivers. That's why the phone can be completely reversible. Because you can um, take phone calls in pretty much any orientation. Now, that's pretty awesome. Now, um, other than that, they didn't add too many software features. Which is what I like to see. Because, you know... I'm not a big fan of when companies, um, you know, they pretty much tear down the original product. 
why not just take Android and add a little bit of features that you think it needs and leave it how it is? That's how you do it, dude. That's how you do it, and that's how they did. So, other than that, you have all of your stock features, your users, all that good stuff, your battery stats. And I must say, the battery life on this was surprisingly good as well, but more on that a little bit later. Now, moving on, let's talk about some of the glitches, stutters, and crashes in this guy. Now, overall, I would say that this only happened once, um, but no, actually it happened uh, about three times. So... When I was loading up a game, like let's say it was a heavier day and I was doing a lot and I decided I wanted to load up a game, sometimes the game would crash. Not all the time, but sometimes. And I also noticed that under heavy load, the, um, the phone does get a little bit warm. Not scorching warm, but a little bit warm. And then other than that, sometimes when I go to hit the back button, it would not register my touch. Now... I bring these up because these are what I call glitches or stutters, so I have to bring them up. But this did not happen all the time, but it did happen occasionally, so I had to bring that up. Now, other than that, no issues with this phone. This, the software experience has actually been very smooth on this guy, other than sometimes having those little hiccups, I would say. So, let's keep it moving. So now, moving along, let's talk about the Wi-Fi in this guy. Now, Wi-Fi-wise, I'm, I'm a little bit conflicted because I thought this would have 802.11 beacon and dual band. So it's supposed to support um, <clears throat> 5 gigahertz and your 2.4 gigahertz. Now, mine does not support that. Let me see if I long press. It's going to take you into there. Actually, let me just go through the settings real fast and get in there. Do it that way. Now, yeah, it's connecting back to my Wi-Fi. All right. Now, I thought it would have dual band, and it doesn't. Now, I did some research, and some of these sites out here is, are saying that it actually supports dual band, but no, it doesn't. So, it supports 802.11 BGNN. That's it. There's no dual band in this guy. As you guys just saw, there's no dual band. But, Wi-Fi wise, this thing runs great. Great. Had no issues with the Wi-Fi. Especially watching movies and videos. No stutters, no cla crashes, no none of that. The Wi-Fi ran great and let me just show you real quick so you can get an idea of how it sounds and also how the Wi-Fi performs let's actually let's load up one of these video samples and then alright so here we are again here you go. back with the Nexus 4 now I have a nice little pool scene for you guys and this one might have a little shake because it's kind of breezy. And I'm taking pictures while shooting the video and I don't mean to. Alright. This actually makes the water look a little pixelated. Yeah. There we go. So as you can see, I only wanted to play a few seconds here. As you can see, no issues with the Wi-Fi. And if I go and show you, let me jump into my gallery here. Actually ran some, some tests. And I had no issues with the data either. But we're going to cover that as we move on. But as you can see, these are the speeds that I'm used to getting on my Wi-Fi. On the 2.4 gigahertz band. Now on the 5 gigahertz band, it's it's a little bit better than this, but that's the speeds that I'm used to getting, and those are the data speeds that I got. Now, overall, Wi-Fi and data on this guy ran beautifully, and I had no issues. 
Now, let's talk about the bands that this guy supports. And this guy supports a lot because it's globally unlocked and you're supposed to be able to use it on pretty much any carrier. But you, ha you still have to be careful that it has the right bands for whatever, whatever carrier that you're taking it to. Now, I use it on T-Mobile. And I had no issues on T-Mobile, but the bands that it supports are GSM bands, 850, 900, 1900, and 1800, and then 850, 1700, 2100, 1900, and 2100 again. Now, LTE bands, and this is important, band 2, um, hold on, I read that backwards, guys, sorry, I have this written down. Uh, band 700, band 12, band 700, band 17, band, the 850 band, band 5, band 4, which is T-Mobile, band 2, and band 7. So, with that being said, in order for me to get great speeds on T-Mobile, I need to have band 4 and band 7. Now, if I wanted to get voice over LTE on T-Mobile... I would need to have, um, I think it's band 12. But all in all, the, the bands here, just make sure they're the, one of the ones supported, like I said, and you shouldn't have any issues. Now, moving on, let's talk about um, the Bluetooth in this guy. Now, this guy has Bluetooth 4.0, and I must say... I didn't have any issues with the Bluetooth. No issues whatsoever. And I'm going to let it fire up here. It's going to try, try to connect, but nothing's on. And as you can see, let me let that focus. I actually tried pairing it to a lot. I tried to pair it to um, my Bluetooth speaker cube over there. I have a review coming out for that soon. My H2s, that view is already live. Review is already live. And my lot fancies that review has been live for a while, and it paired up with no issues. Now I also tried um, sending files back and forth between phones, because as y'all know, I have a lot of phones now. I have my Nexus Four, I have this, I have my Life One. Um, there's a lot. I got my Windows Phone over there. Didn't have any issues with that. So Bluetooth in this guy is awesome. Now. Let's keep it going. Let's talk about the GPS. And y'all know me because I've talked about this a lot. The GPS is one of the most important things to me. Now, and I'm happy to report that the GPS in this guy worked beautifully. Now, let me pull up another thing here so you guys can see. Now, this was within a matter of seconds. It picked up a whole bunch of satellites and locked on in a matter of seconds. So that was awesome. And while I was using turn-by-turn -turn navigations, didn't have any issues. So the GPS is awesome. Now, moving on, let's talk about the call quality and the speakers in this guy. Now, the speakers you've already heard from the um, from the Wi-Fi test. But overall, speaker quality while on phone calls is awesome. The speaker calls didn't have any issues with that. People on the other end were crystal clear, and it got quite loud. Now, the receivers were pretty good, pretty good. I did have a little bit of crackling when I wasn't on speakerphone, but I don't know if that was on my end or theirs, because sometimes I didn't have any. Sometimes I did, so I didn't know. I don't know if that was me or the person on the other end, but other than that, and I only bring it up because it happened more than I would like. But other than that, I didn't have any issues with phone calls or speaker calls on this device at all. So that's that. Now, moving on, let's talk about the cameras in this guy. Now. I'm not going to show you, um, I might show you one or two video samples, but I'm going to do some more video samples, and I have them posted in the video sample playlist on my channel. So, I'm only going to show you a little bit. But now, in terms of cameras, it has a 
5 megapixel camera up here I believe and a 13 megapixel back here and the camera interface is really simple and really straightforward and that is pretty awesome and it also has a whole bunch of features like you could do time lapse you can do manual mode you got a bar scanner in here so if you want to scan a barcode and see what the price is you could do that then you have your regular features like your HDR your panorama your beauty face and your auto mode and it does shoot in um, 1080p and that's it shoots in 1080p at I think it's 30 frames per second now I did, I was a little sad, however, because as you can see, if I want to use all 13 megapixels, I'm going to let that focus some, I have to shoot in 4x3, and shooting in that widescreen 16x9 is actually what I feel is the best way to shoot, so if I want to shoot in 16x9, I had to take it down to 10 megapixels, but it is what it is. Now, also... It does have digital um, stabilization or digital electronic stabilization. And as I said, it shoots in 1080p and 720p. Now out of the box, it comes in 10 megapixel in the 10 megapixel format to give you the 16x9. And it comes at the 720p. So you're going to have to go in and change that if you want, to sh want it to shoot at 1080p. And I must say, the cameras are awesome on this guy. It's really awesome. And, yeah. Now, if we flip to the front, you can see... Hi, guys. Sorry I didn't comb my hair or anything. But you can see it looks quite beautiful. And I do believe that this is... Let me check real fast. A... Yes, a 5 megapixel camera. But, once again, I'm sad again. Because if you want the full 5 megapixels, I'm going to let that focus. You have to be in 4 by 3 If you want the widescreen, you're going to go down to 2 megapixels for the 16 by 9 So, it is what it is. Now, and you also can shoot in 1080p or 720p or standard. So, with either camera, you can shoot in 1080p. And I must say, this camera is pretty awesome. Now, you do lose some functionality in the front-facing camera. Like, you can't use the barcode, you can't use the manual mode, can't use the time-lapse. But, it's understandable because it's a lower quality camera in the front. But, they're still both um, beautiful cameras and they shoot in really good quality. So, moving on, let me just show y'all some, a little bit of samples, then we'll keep it moving. So right here, I was at my friend's house, he's in the process of building his own bar, so I figured it might be nice, and you get to see how it handles. That shot came out very well, came out very well indeed. And then this is inside the house. That shot also came out very well. And then this is a nice little clock. It looked pretty cool, so I decided to take a picture of it. And man, it came out beautifully. And now this is, it was a rainy day on this day when I took the shot. And I must say, it looked like it handled it quite well. I don't know if the camera's going to do it justice. But I really think it handled it quite well. And then this was the selfie shooter in low light. As you can see, it struggled a little bit. But it still maintained like, an even balance on my skin tone. So that's not too bad. But the picture itself is a little grainy. But that was low light. So, And then this is absolutely no light. This is... Um, um, in my friend's bar, he has a nice little thing where it strobes the stars on the ceiling. And I thought it looked pretty cool. <laughs> that and I was kind of tipsy. But it came out pretty good, I must say. And then that was New Year's. 
I had to keep it turned up for New Year's. And now I'm going to show you a uh, couple seconds of this video I took around New Year's time. Just, just a couple seconds. Alright, so what we have here is an impromptu camera test on the Alcatel Item oh, 3. Not flipping. My little cousin's birthday. Okay, you hear the music in the background. Chicken cooking. Short man on camera. Look at the elbows. It's good, it's good, it's good. <laughs> cousin Kelly, say hi. Okay. Okay. This YouTube, say hi, girl. Hi. Hi. This, this is Alright, so yeah, that's that's a few of my family members. That's my auntie right there, and then that's my brother in the background, and you saw my cousin and my nephew. And uh, yeah, we was getting it in. DJ was playing music, we was having a nice little party for New Year's. And then of course I had my, my own little party after that party. So yeah, New Year's was good, and I hope, I hope everybody had a good New Year's as well. But, as you can see, the cameras on this guy are quite awesome. Now, moving on, let's talk about gaming in this guy. Now, I've become quite addicted to some of these games. And I do believe that this phone with the Adreno 306 can pretty much handle anything. But these are the ones that I tested. I tested Asphalt 8, Fruit Ninja and subway server and um, aside from crashing occasionally under heavy heavy loads these games ran perfectly almost perfectly and now I didn't adjust any settings or anything like that I just ran it how it was straight out of the box didn't have any issues with it aside from under heavy heavy loads now let me load up Asphalt 8 play a couple seconds for you guys and you can see it in real time Whew, and this video is getting quite long <clears throat> and now on another note gaming with stereo speakers makes the gaming experience awesome I just had to put that out there so now let's line up a little race here Anything you get free always has to have ads in it. All the time. Alright. And let me see. I might have to cut this into two videos for you guys. Because I think, yeah, it's going to, it's going to tap out at 32 minutes. So I'm going to have to split this into two. But anyway, I'm going to have to keep this party going. <clears throat> and so, if it cuts into two, you're going to see a brief cut, and then I'll be back. But I'm going to keep it going. These speakers sound great. Wow. Whoops. Hmm. Well, aside from my very crappy playing, you can see it's handling the game quite well. And I'm not really having any issues. And it's rendering quite well as well. Alright, so let's go ahead and cut it right there. So as y'all see, no issues playing games on this guy. Now, let's jump into the benchmarks. And I must say, now y'all know I only do benchmarks strictly for the numbers, but it got some pretty decent numbers, if I have to say so. Now, that wasn't the best, but they were decent. So... Right here, this is 3D Mark, and you can see, well, let that focus, then you'll be able to see. It scored a 4,323, and this is Ice Storm Unlimited. 
then this was N22 and you can see it scored in the bottom of the pack but it scored a 25,253 which is pretty good and y'all already know how I feel about this if you get the right balance of software and hardware and you have an overall smooth experience it actually translates to a really good user experience and at the end of the day the overall user experience is what matters not the raw numbers so you can see from Geekbench 3 here it scored a um, 466 on the single score on the single core score and a 1378 on the multi core score now in Quadrant here it scored a 6,771 and that's actually pretty good for quadrant standards here and this is in Valemo in the multi-core test scored a 1,093 and as you can see fairly bottom of the pack let me let that focus some there you go and then this was the metal test and there you go, bottom of the pack yet again. And then I already showed y'all that. So, overall benchmarks, I mean, it's decent. It's not the best, but it's decent. But as y'all have seen, the overall user experience is awesome. So, what can I say? Benchmarks are just numbers. Now, <clears throat> moving along, guys. Let's talk about the battery life in this guy now battery life wise this has a 2000 milliamp hour battery in it and I must say that it does really really well guys really really well now let me show you some numbers and explain so as always when it comes to battery life I have my three different scenarios. I have a light, I have a medium, and then I have a heavy. So, light usage wise, let me get to it here. Mm -hmm. Alright, so in terms of light use, I was able to get 20 hours of overall time out of it, as you can see right there. And I got a screen on time of about 3 hours and 45 minutes. Now, cranking it up, heavy use wise, I got just over 10 hours, and I got a screen on time of 6 hours and 12 minutes. Now I ran these tests, um, I ran these tests multiple times, so I, I did at least 3 times. So I really did tax the battery. Just with standard use. I don't believe in using battery benchmark tests and all that stuff. I'm a regular user. I figure you guys want to hear about how it works in regular usage. So these are all numbers from regular usage with